We are back because it's time for another Starbase Summary. September 14th through the 17th here. Last time, my buddy Jack filled in for me. Uh, big thanks to Jack for getting that done. He said it was time to ship it. And, of course, we were there referring to the launch mount. The launch mount needed to have the adapter attached on it. Good news is, by the end of this video, we're actually going to have a ship on that launch mount as they continue towards the Flight 11 campaign here. What we're seeing is the old orbital launch mount, or launch mount. Interesting thing here, this is probably going to be the last time we see a lot of work around there. Hey, look, there were some large fans. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna be snarky and be like, well, there were only four fans on that truck, but the thing said eight. Uh, as it turns out, I guess there were eight in two separate shipments of four each. Now, that's from Highway. There you go. So those are going all the way up to the launch site. Look like they might be for vaporizers, something to get some airflow going through uh, the equipment over there. But an interesting find out there. Again, it's going to be the last time. Oh, hey. It's not going to be the last time we see this. The Gigabay Foundation work is not going anywhere except into the ground. It's going into the ground is where it's going because they still have an awful lot of work to do on there. And that old HLS Airbnb nose cone there in the back. Disclaimer, I don't actually think that can be rented out as an Airbnb. Uh, I'm pretty sure it can't, actually. I think you have to work at SpaceX to go. I, I don't think anybody sleeps inside of that. Anyways, wow, look how deep it is. I mean, those guys in the bottom are completely standing up, and they are fully, the top of their hard hat is under the ground level of the hole. Here we've got B18.1 test tank. You can see it's in the uh, crusher there. Oh, this is from Caesar. I was like, I don't recognize this angle. There's a pile of dirt there on the side that was new, but this is Caesar shooting from Highway 4, it looks like. Excellent. Wow. All right. A little bit of a tough view from River Tower here. Not going to apologize. Is this going to be from River? Or this might be from Outpost. Either way, that was some tough video there, but you can see that it was getting frosty, it looked like, as they were testing it. Now, these little miniature starship, starboat, can you put it? starboat into a starship or what the heck is that thing well it's rolling out and it's oddly on the side of a stand like it looks like you could put a booster on one side of the center a round round barrel section on one side of the stand a ship or whatever but the other side of it look at that weird thing it's a little miniature rocket but look at how the stand is built and how that tank is on one side of it there that's so weird as it turns out, we had it labeled mystery tank, but that's a really interesting fixture there. I mean, it's rolling. Where is it going? Let's see. All right, it's turning in there. So it's not going all the way down to Massey's. It was just sort of going into the back, uh, the Remedios area there. All right. Well, I guess we're going to keep an eye on that and say, oh, no, wait, it's back there. What is it just, it just? It was going around the construction is what was happening. And now we've got a lift up there. That's really interesting. I really wonder what's going on there. Why would you put a tank next to another tank like that? Is this, I'm, I'm guessing, is this a propellant transfer thing? Is this to, to put a tank on one side and then have an interface and then pump propellant between the two to see how it works? Uh, clearly not the same as being on orbit, but why would you put a tank next to something? Help me out down in the comments. Let me know what you all think. Why would you have a tank a smaller tank, like a holding tank, on seemingly on the side. That's very weird. We will see. I'm just looking at it in the background still. Yeah, okay, there's some Gigabay rebar happening, whatever. Um, I'm still, like, zooming in between the crane and the, uh, the article there. I'm, I'm wondering how they're going to use that or what they're going to use that for. Anyways, moving right along. Caesar getting some nighttime shots of Ship 39's nose cone. Wow, with all the scaffolding in there, it's even hard to see these days. But if you saw the ship rollout, actually coming up later in the video, I saw it because it was on Starbase Live, uh, the TPS has been looking fantastic lately. So I cannot wait to see these ships continue to move down the old assembly line. I like this. It's just like other nose cones <laughs> in the Star Factory here at Pillar 11R. The robotic little tap welding thing there sticking off. It's almost like on a plank or something. Ship 4345's nose cones. 
there in the back. It is. It's literally the process. You see the nose cone on the right doesn't have the pins on it. Then the nose cone on the left had the pins. Then it goes over to TPS, and it just goes down and goes down. It's just a straight-up assembly line. Going to check in with Pad 2 here. Pad 2 is going to be the workhorse for all the future launches after we get Flight 11. So this is where we expect Flight 12 and beyond to come from. And then we expect pl Flight, uh, or not Flight, Pad 1 to get torn down and upgraded to be more like this pad, more like the traditional NASA uh, monolithic launch pad with the actual flame trench flame bucket versus an upside down shower head and just firing 33 rocket engines at it. I will say that's not something NASA's ever done, fired 33 engines at a launch pad. So that part is a little bit different, but the quintessential concrete ramp design, I guess the ramp itself isn't concrete. The flame bucket has the deluge and yada, yada, yada. But in any event, this is going back to some of the basics there. Now, Pad 2's OLM deck, you can see the two different booster QDs. If you watched the video that Jack narrated, you saw some of the first tests of those things actuating, moving back and forth, which I thought was really cool. I oh, yeah, wow, you see into the draw works there. Ah, that's really good lighting with a huge spool of cable. Single cable. The cable. People love to correct me in the comments when I say cables. It's just one cable. It goes up and down a lot. But in any event, that's really that's really great lighting to see into the draw works there in that massive cable system to lift the chopsticks up and down. Caesar playing around with this light as well. Look at this. The glow of the offloading area for the cryo trucks. The cryo truck there itself blinking. Look at the stars in the background. Pad one behind the tank farm. Whatever Caesar is shooting with here, this is fantastic. I don't know what lens wizard trickery Caesar has been pulling, but something is capturing an awful lot of light and an awful lot of glow. And even though you got the truck headlights and the bright work lights of around the truck and then the glow of the status lights and then the stars in the background, this thing has some range, it looks like. Look at this blowing down the road. Massive thanks to Caesar and Jack and Gage is out here as well helping out the team making sure we get awesome shots like this and you see the, the sand and wind blowing up the road. That's what they're out there standing in so that they can share the shots with you. All right. We're going to look in here and see the 18.3 test tank. Oh, we're not looking into anything. It's just there in the foreground, but it's a little dark. It's the one that has the uh, crown on top of it. Going to check in with yet another B18.1 test, it looks like. They're just doing a lot of testing with the thing. I wonder what they're trying to, to shake out or whatever. But here's the star of the show. Here is Ship 38 coming out of the Mega Bay, Mega Bay 2 there. Look at the TPS. The TPS is looking fantastic on this thing. Oh, nice light. Is that a light on the back of that guy's hat? That's like his battery status indicator or something. Or friend or foe identification, but that wouldn't make any sense here at Starbase. Why would they need to worry about that? I don't know. I, I'm going to guess that that's the uh, battery status or something like that. Maybe it's a safety thing. Maybe it's a joke. He wants to look like a Jawa facing backwards or something. I feel like he needs a little brown hood or something. He's not really selling the Jawa outfit if that's the intention, but... Oh, nice. You can see the little uh, extra work platform, the little drawbridge. It's not really a drawbridge. It's more of a plank that sticks out of the side. Second plank reference in this video. It's weird that it's happened twice. In any event, so we are removing here. Are we removing or are we adding this? We're moving it out of the way to the side. Which way is this? Well, there's a drone flying up there, too. Look at that. Is this drone helping? Is this drone documenting the state of the TPS or something? Is this a beauty shot for, like, the comms team or something like that? Or is it an engineering shot being used for... I really wonder. But there goes the drone. Maybe that is the comms team sort of getting the shots there. But the ship rolling around the corner, avoiding the gigabay work. Coming right at Caesar here. A lot of flashing there in that truck in the front. Right on past the Mars mural there on the side of the parking garage. And we are going to see this roll all the way to the pad. Now, as a reminder, 
This is going out to the pad for static fire testing. They shipped the pad, as Jack said last time. They converted it into a ship test stand because of the problems at Massey's. Remember, Massey's burned down, fell over, sank into the swamp. Uh, not really. Ship 36 blew up and damaged Massey's, so they could not complete the ship testing there. And they made that adapter so that they could complete their ship testing out at the launch pad at pad one instead. So the ship rolling all the way up the road here to get installed. Nah, I mean, to get mounted on pad one so that it can go through a static fire campaign. Now, I say campaign. What are they going to static fire? I think we're going to have to find out in the next couple days. Are they going to do the single engine static fire and then the six engine static fire? Are they just going to do a single engine and a cryo? Are they just going to go straight to six? Remember, the ship static fire adapter is not really made for this. It's not great at uh, protecting the ship during a static fire this way. It technically works. It technically batches the bottom of the ship and converts it to attach to where the booster would normally attach, right? But it's not really meant for this. And I think there's some concern that if they do testing, they can actually damage the ship because the pad is just not meant for this, right? So what will happen? Will it be one engine, then six engine? We will see. I guarantee you we will be watching it live. Here we go with the lift. Ship 38 lifting onto the static fire adapter there, the ship adapter. We will certainly be watching it live. If it's not some crazy hour, we'll do a dedicated stream for you as well. We'll tell you all about it. We'll tell you what we know. We'll tell you what we think. And we will talk through this. But if all goes to plan, this should be the last time we see this sort of shenanigans happening this specific sort of shenanigans there will be future shenanigans at starbase that specific shenanigan the uh, ship being there on pad one this is probably the last time we'll see that if this static fire campaign goes well hey thank you all so much for watching jack thanks for filling in for me last time i appreciate you man and we will catch you next time hopefully we see some results of that static fire test but for now we will see you nerds later